Hi, we're at the Combine Naval Event 2025 just outside London and we're now on the booth of Ultra Maritime, a global leader in uh, anti-submarine warfare technologies, uh, including well, sonobuoys and uh, this is going to be our focus. And I am meeting with uh, Carlo Zafanella, the President and CEO of Ultra Maritime, as well as uh, Admiral Mark Kenny, Senior Vice President for uh, Business uh, Development. Gentlemen, uh, you very recently, well, yesterday, uh, made an important announcement regarding, uh, well, the cooperation with uh, General Atomics uh, for new G-size uh, sonobuoys and their integration with uh, GA's uh, Sea Guardian uh, UAVs. Can you please uh, tell us more, Carlo? Uh, certainly. Thank you. Uh, we did. We're very excited about it. So, we have been at the forefront of sonobuoy technology for many, many years. And we, we design and manufacture sonobuoys here in the UK, in Canada, and in USA. Sonobuoys traditionally come in, in two sizes. The US only uses the A-size sonobuoys, that's the larger one that you see here. Whereas in the UK and in Canada, we also make G-size sonobuoys, which are half size, and generally that translates to lower battery life, but otherwise the same overall performance. As we've been pushing hard in the advent of truly unmanned ASW, and we've had numerous technical developments from undersea sensing to sonobuoys really focused on, on unmanned and autonomous warfare. Logically, one of the best things we could do is to team with General Atomics, which has certainly the most prevalent and most valuable unmanned air vehicle for this kind of deployment, and find a way to marry our half-size sonobuoys a technology that we've needed to develop, which is we make the receivers that currently go in P8s, for example, but make them miniaturized as well, and that development is happening now. Combine those things with General Atomic's ability to then make a launcher that's compatible with these so that we have an entire end-to-end -end system making unmanned deployment of sonobuoys at distance and processing thereof possible. And that's what we've done here, and we're doing that all on our research and development and General Atomics research and development all internal. Uh, Mark, based on your experience, uh, why is this uh, important for uh, Navy end users? Yes, well, having the unmanned aspect in ASW takes the crew member uh, and the man off the forward line and lets the unmanned aircraft do the forward work in denied areas or high-risk areas. So it's not a replacement for the P-8 or the Atlantic or the P-1. It augments that with an unmanned capability, one, to extend range, and two, to reduce the risk to the, the, the aviators. So we're getting a lot of interest from uh, uh, our allies, India, South Korea, Japan, NATO, and even the U.S. Navy, about bringing this capability to augment their manned platforms. Uh, Carlo, uh, besides uh, this news with the G-Size, uh, are you uh, working on uh, anything else? Any future roadmap regarding uh, sonobuoys at Ultra? Yeah, in fact, in fact, maybe I'll have Mark describe the power of multi-static active, but to be clear that we make our G-Size buoys both here in the UK and in Canada, and we make multiple varieties today. We also have multiple development contracts to advance those technologies on a very consistent basis. So every year or two we introduce augmentations to that technology. The idea here is not for any one specific has to be that sonobuoy. It's for the generic deployment of G-size sonobuoys and therefore multiple different levels of capability depending on what a customer or operational scenario might demand. And one of those very powerful things is of course MSA. Yes sir, the, uh, the multi-static allows you to put a field of sonobuoys down, each pinging, each receiving. Which you get the benefit, you get a you, you get a huge increase in detection capability for the quiet submarines. So that that is a game changer, and adapting that to the MQ-9 has not been done. That buoy is exportable to our allies. We make it uh, here in the UK and Canada. The other piece of this is on the on the GA size. They're making a launcher that can use employ any of our sonar buoys, exchangeable, and they can be these buoys can be cross decked to our allies on the A-size buoy across the runway uh, and to be able to have that, you know, that varied supply chain to the MQ-9. 
The multi-static capability we're going to have in the water probably at the end of the summer, early fall. So this is this is a very mature capability. This this is not a lot of R&D. Now on General Atomic side, Carlo mentioned their investment. They're building that common launcher. Uh, that's probably the the biggest technical challenge. So they can put different size sonar buoys in in the tarmac and, and get and get up in the air. We're also at, uh, reducing our processor for a smaller form factor, I'm sorry, our receiver for a smaller form factor and allow the, the monitoring of a higher number of sonar buoys. That's mainly our investment. Those are all coming together this year. All right, Mark, Carlo, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xavier.